Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and this is the best retro gear. Throwback helmets are usually rubbish. A lot of manufacturers take vintage style as an excuse to use outdated designs, which sucks because helmet construction has come a long way since 1970. The Bell Moto 3 is different. This fiberglass composite shell is proper 21st century light, 1,370 grams for this size large, which is pretty good considering it has a really chunky sun peak. Of course, the Moto 3 is even lighter without it. The EPS foam is also very modern, allowing the Moto 3 to pass DOT and ECE standards, while staying surprisingly slim. The EPS is even extended behind the chin bar, which is a nice contemporary safety convention. Unfortunately, Bell did go outdated with the liner. This is terry cloth, and it looks and feels like an old towel. If that's somehow romantic and authentic to you, awesome. For most of us, it just feels cheap. On that note, I think Bell could have done a little bit more with the Moto 3. It doesn't take much newfangled engineering to make these vents closable from the inside, and that would be a huge bonus for rainy rides. Also, I understand that the clean bowling ball look is very trendy, but a few discreet exhaust ports back here wouldn't go amiss. However, the Moto 3 isn't really at risk of being stuffy since the eye port is massive. It can accommodate almost any goggle for that reason, and the neutral head shape will fit almost any head. In fact, the only thing to prevent people from buying a Moto 3 is the not-so-vintage $430 price tag. Now, this is the $300 Scorpion Belfast. We do have loads of other options in the retro open face category, most notably the Beltwell Bonanza and the Bell Custom 500, so why choose Scorpion's new kid on the block? Craftsmanship. This fiberglass shell is hand-laid. The Napa leather in here is hand-stitched. It also happens to be the most plushy and luxurious thing I've ever stuck on my head, for what that's worth. Now, have you ever thought, boy, those eyeglass channels in modern helmets sure are tacky? Me neither. But Scorpion did. So they hollowed out the foam underneath the liner right at the temples. That makes it a lot easier to put eyeglasses on in this helmet. And of course, that way they didn't have to carve a channel in their precious Napa leather. There's some discreet handiwork up here too. A drop-down sunshade for riders who don't wear goggles. But if you do wear goggles, there's this. Emgo's Roadhawk. It's primarily a style piece. Take these air vents, which are a farce because they're tiny and they don't even face the direction of airflow. And then there's the hinged three position lens adjuster, which only really adjusts the position of its own hinge because the lenses themselves are hard stitched to the leather. But the whole thing looks very steampunk and that's cool. In terms of materials, we have chrome and leather on the outside and then suede where it contacts my face. I will say that the goggle was rather uncomfortable to wear at first, but once I broke in the foam right at this nose piece, it felt great. Field of vision is mediocre at best. There's a reason modern goggles have one lens rather than two, but the anti-fog coating has yet to let me down. I just wish Emgo wouldn't brag about it in the most visible and annoying of places. Main downside to the Roadhawk is that it costs $50, which is really too much for a style piece. I know LS2 has a knockoff version coming down the pipeline. It'll cost about 20 bucks, and if it's any good, the Roadhawk will be roadkill. Now, what do you think of these gloves? Trick question, because they're two different models. This is a Scorpion Bixby, and this is an Alpine Stars Oscar Robinson. Obviously, both gloves have a similar vintage style, and they both punch my wallet with the force of 120 bucks. The difference is that Scorpion's Bixby is more protective. It's 100% top grain goat skin, whereas Alpine Stars uses 10% synthetic suede on those sliding areas. Also, Scorpion has thicker armor on the knuckles, on three fingers, on the lower palm, and even put some padding on the thumb, which Alpine Stars forgot to do entirely. And then Scorpion uses an accordion stretch here at the wrist, whereas Alpine Stars uses a panel joint slide for slide, the panel's gonna break first. So the Oscar Robinson is less safe, but it's also slimmer and more perforated, especially here on the top hand. And this is definitely the cooler, more comfortable option. Both gloves are elasticated at the wrist with a big Velcro pull to seal the deal. I've heard a lot of people complain about the Oscar Robinson fitting too small, but that hasn't really been my experience. I'm comfortably wearing a large in both gloves, and my hands are 9 inches around the palm. It's worth noting that only the Scorpion is touchscreen friendly. Personally, I choose the Bixby over the Oscar Robinson. After a thousand kilometers, my Alpine Stars are already feeling too thin. Whereas, yeah, the Bixby is a little bit chunky out of the box, but once it breaks in, I'll be glad to have the extra leather and padding. Of course, that's just my opinion. But then again, that's all these videos are. When it comes to vintage boots, I could sing the praises of my TCX X-Waves all day long. But in another day, in another video, I've already done that. So let me just say that the X-Wave is the most comfortable riding shoe. It's also one of the slimmest, so you don't get that motorcycle moon boot look. 
And of course I get all that rustic leather. Even the soles come out of the box looking like this. I've put hundreds of shoes on my feet since I got my X-Waves, but if I could go back, I'd buy them all over again. It's the best waterproof riding shoe out there. So why am I showing you this? It's an Alpine Stars Oscar Rayburn, similar retro feel and price to the X-Wave, somewhere between two and 300, depending on the day. But unlike the X-Wave, this is protection over comfort. The Oscar Rayburn is CE Category 2, a safety level normally found on Space Age race boots. Basically, we have a stiff protective sole backed up with an Eva foam footbed. And then inside the triple stitch leather, I get a rock solid toe box, heel counter, and then Alpine Star's dual density ankle protectors, which they love to brag about so much. Basically, it's just hard armor on top of soft armor, so small and big impacts are handled accordingly. I'm more impressed with this placement of the logo for the Oscar design. It's very cool how they used it to hide the armor bulge. On the inside, I have suede at the back to keep my heel from riding up. And then I have some extra foam just underneath here and under here. That prevents me from feeling my shift lever and my ankle plates so much. There is no waterproof membrane in the shoe though. It's kind of weird for Alpine Stars to cheap out on their flagship Oscar boot. I think these are almost as good as my beloved X-Waves and they're certainly very different. If you want riding shoes that look and walk like a regular pair of kicks, get the X-Waves. But if you want bulletproof protection, then this Oscar Rayburn is probably the best alternative. Its leather is designed to develop a natural patina after the first few rides, and the soles are replaceable, so you should be able to enjoy this shoe for ages. Now I'm going to close with jackets. All leather makes a classic choice, so if you want a bunch of options, check out our cruiser jacket video. Retro textiles are harder to come by. This is the Joe Rocket Steel City, and I think it looks the part. Basically, we have three layers built into one. There's the waxed canvas outer, which will stay waterproof so long as you keep waxing it. And then there's whatever layer this purple corridor I call is supposed to belong to. And then finally, there's the inner hoodie, which can actually be zipped out and worn on its own. Ta-da! But you probably won't want to do that since all the vault CE approved armor is housed in this canvas layer, back, shoulders, and elbows. The jacket has many other features that do many things, like these loops, which keep your jacket and pants together in a slide, or this reflective trim so the retro babes can find you at night. Fitment-wise, I'm six foot three with a 39 inch chest. This medium nails it at the waist with those adjustment straps done up, and the arms are fine too. The hoodie has those thumb loops, and that helps to keep my sleeves down, but I think the Steel City runs a bit short on the torso, so I'd probably get a large next time. And that's how I ride retro. Thanks for watching.